I'll be reading from John 17, 17 to 19. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. And their sakes I sanctify myself, and they also might be sanctified through truth. We have an account in the scripture of, uh, of a time of great trial and, and tribulation that David was encountering. Enemies on all his sides were closing in upon him. And he cried out unto God with this question, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? See, this, this cry has spiritual significance as well has spiritual implications. And even though David declared this some 3,000 years ago, it is a most pertinent and timely question to be considered by the saints, especially in these perilous times, when we know that there is a direct assault by the adversary against the very foundations, and that being against the Lord and against his anointed. See, if God, the only true God, is not seen and declared and perceived at the center of all things, the foundation is non-existent. If God, the only true God, is not seen and declared and seen as the, tru as the truth as he is, the high and lofty one who, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, and who changeth not, and has before the foundations of the world determined an eternal purpose, and that he will work unto that eternal purpose to its full fulfillment. And one of those things is that he himself has determined the forming of a people for himself, a people that is like unto himself and holy people unto the Lord thy God, a people chosen of God to be a special people unto himself above all people that are on the face of the earth. And yet, because of sin, all of men are looked upon by God as an unholy thing. Disqualified from this high calling of God, but the gospel announces good news. The good news of one, God's beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was chosen of God, equipped of God, who sent forth from God, who came forth from God to wash us from our sins, to sanctify us before God that we might be acceptable in his sight, set apart for God, as a special people unto himself, approved and accepted of God. Now, this is, it is from this sure foundation that I desire to speak to you in this matter concerning the sanctification and the associations of our sanctification with the gospel. Now, I ask, why is this necessary? Why is it necessary to, to declare this foundation? because only those that are built upon it will partake of its benefits and prosper in these things forever and ever. All others, all others who are not built upon this foundation are coming down. They're coming down, brethren. Now, with this matter of the foundation, it is of God. It's God who purposed this. It's God who purposed his people to be sanctified. This is an eternal purpose, one that's going to continue on forever and forever. He, was, he had determined and purposed to form a people for himself, a holy people, to purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. See? Now unto the fulfilling of this good pleasure of God, it is declared Jesus is going to give us encouragement in this and strength to, to enter into what he's doing. Jesus declared for their sakes, 
I sanctify myself. Amen. He, see, it is God who has devised the means to accomplish his eternal purpose. And he has divined, and Jesus Christ himself is those divine, devised means. The gospel continues to declare this truth, that God is doing this by, through, and in his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And they, capital T, have set themselves, capital T, apart to accomplish this very purpose. Amen. See that these, these ones that are set apart from God are like unto God. They don't just have the appearance of him. They think like God. They speak like God. They reason like God. And as the, all the things that God is noted for, these people reflect that. This is a work, though, that God is doing, and he's doing it in Christ Jesus. So at the foundation, at the foundation, what I'm speaking about here, this means that the matter of sanctification is that of a divine initiative and purpose. All of its workings and all of its effects of their workings come forth from God's purpose. God has purpose to form a people unto myself, saith the Lord. Amen. See, not one of Adam's race did ask God to be set apart from all people that are on the face of the earth, unto God himself. No man even knew what it was to be a special people unto God, let alone what would be required of them to be such. So at the very foundation of sanctification is God himself who exclusively purposed it, who established it, who devised the means by which all his desired effects would flow from his workings. From its core, sanctification is a work of the Lord wrought out from his eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, and the particular people, the saints, are sanctified by God the Father. Amen. So now with this truth in mind, if the foundation of the divine character of the holy, holy, holy God is minimized and set aside, and the truth of his eternal purpose which he purposed and provided and worked at is destroyed in the hearts, in the minds of men, and even in the church, if all his aspects of his so great salvation that they declare that they belongeth unto the Lord in all things that pertain to life and godliness, even our sanctification. If this foundation be destroyed, to answer the psalmist's inquiry, there is nothing that anyone can do. That is the truth of the matter. And this truth must be known and believed upon unto the very salvation of our souls. Amen. No. There is, there is this matter that we want to consider now. What, what if, what if at the very best of possibilities, even if one man had a consciousness of God and of his holiness, and at best his attempts to show his approval unto God could only be accomplished by his own works. But what does Jesus have to say about such a one? But he declares of such a one is one that climbeth up unto God by some other way than that what God has ordained. But what does Jesus say about such a one? What will be his final end? Jesus said it would be met with an eternal judgment against them, themselves being declared a thief and a robber. Such ones will be shown to have attempted to rob and steal the glory and the preeminence that God has ordained to belong to the Son and none other. Amen. All such ones who climb up another way than the way that God himself ordained, and that is in Christ himself, these shall be cast out forever from the presence of God forever and forever, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
Now, continuing on from this foundational perspective, God has declared there is a chief cornerstone. This is chief cornerstone is that which God himself has laid for a foundation, a precious cornerstone, a tried cornerstone. And that cornerstone is declared to be Christ Jesus himself. So if the preeminence concerning Jesus in our sanctification, in our ever-continuing need for him, if that truth falleth into the street, none shall be able to stand in the presence of God, for the Lord our God is a consuming fire. Amen. But know this as well, brethren, you who do trust and believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and are built on that foundation by faith, though there be adversaries that attack the foundation of God and of his son Jesus Christ through another gospel which is not a gospel at all, though there be liars and deceivers who present another Christ which is not the Christ of God, though there be wolves in sheep's clothing in the midst of the church, nevertheless, God. Nevertheless, God, in the midst of all of these adversaries, through the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, God has declared with great glory and power and will continue to do so to the ministration of the saints that there is a sure and steadfast foundation that cannot be shaken. God said, I am the Lord that sanctifieth you. In what I have purposed, it shall stand. In what I have spoken, I shall also do it. See, this is the truth that is sure and steadfast. And the gospel declares this to be the case. And the gospel declares the devised means that God has provided and declares them to be effective under the accomplishing of his purpose. At the, at, the, at the foundation, then, is that which God has purposed, provided, and accomplished. The Hebrew writer says this in Hebrews 10.10, 10, We are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And again, he says in Hebrews 13, we, that with his own blood, we are sanctified. So from the foundational perspective, our sanctification is accomplished. But now, in order for men to be brought into it, to, to partake of it, to walk in it, God had to devise means in which this would occur. He had, to, he had to bring men into the communion and fellowship with the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And the gospel declares the good news that this is what he has done. Colossians 2 is, a, is an announcement of this. Beginning in verse 9, Verse 10, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom, or in him, also are ye circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins by, of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. You are buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in trespasses and sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath God quickened together with him, having forgiven you all of your trespasses. Now the main emphasis of this declaration is Christ in him, with him, through him. This is, the, this is the announcement of the accomplished sanctification by Jesus Christ. And now God put his, putting us into Christ Jesus. 
in order that we may have the fellowship with his body and blood, which is our accomplished sanctification. Of God are you in Christ Jesus. The gospel declares, who has made unto us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. It's of God that we are in Christ Jesus. See? And the fullness of God's working in putting us into Christ is declared to be the operation of God. And the, and the apostles will continue to, to declare and labor in this truth about the, the benefits and the workings of God are all in Christ. Amen. All of the promises of God are in him. Yea, and in him, amen. amen, to the glory, by the church, to the glory of God the Father. So much so <laughs> that to the Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 1-2, it is declared that they are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So we want to continue to, to consider these things about Jesus, about his role in our sanctification. For he is at the very foundation of it. And some of what is required of him to accomplish this sanctification. These things had to all be prepared aforetime in order for men to enter into it. Now, Jesus did not take this honor unto himself, but is called of God unto it. His is the highest calling unto any man. For what, what Jesus was called unto in its accomplishment is impossible with any other man. Only the Son of God is able. Now consider these things. Consider these things that are essential unto our sanctification. These are the things that Jesus has been called into by God. This high calling of God in Christ Jesus, these things are vital unto sanctification. Jesus was called or, and set forth by God to be a propitiation for sin. Amen. He was called of God to be a prince and a savior, to be the judge of the quick and the dead, to be a light to the Gentiles, to be made sin for us, to be the head over all things, to be the mediator of a new covenant, to be made an high priest over the house of God, to be the savior of the world. See, all of these workings of the exalted Christ are vital unto those that are being saved, even our sanctification. Now, in considering this list and the many more that the scripture reveals about Christ, see what these things are impossible with men. So then who is sufficient unto this? Well, hear the glad tidings of the gospel. God has called him who shall not fail nor be discouraged. This is the one who has accomplished our sanctification and is the very provision for it in him. Amen. See, God's calling has set his beloved son apart uniquely and specifically to accomplish his eternal purpose. And Jesus was called unto this work from before the foundations of the world. Here is the testimony of Jesus from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 49.1, he declares, The Lord hath called me from the womb. This is speaking about Jesus. But he was not only called from the womb of his mother. He was called even before that. He was called from the womb, from the womb of God's eternal purpose. Jesus was called to perform that eternal purpose which God has purposed, to sanctify and set apart a people for God himself. 
Now the scripture also tells us this concerning Jesus, that he submitted himself fully to his Father's calling. Jesus declared in his full and complete submission to that which his heavenly Father had purposed, he said this, in the volume of the book, it is written of me, I come to do thy will, O God. This is the testimony of God's Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, unto sanctifying himself. He's set, he is setting himself apart to accomplish the will and purpose of God. So first and foremost, Jesus' sanctification was to fulfill God's eternal purpose. That's what he's sanctifying himself for. And the benefits of his sanctifying himself are going to flow unto us. It'll be for our sakes, as Jesus affirmed. For their sakes, I will sanctify myself. Amen. <clears throat> now this matter of Jesus declaring these things unto, unto us, making them known about himself. In the in the in the our Lord's ministry in the days of his flesh, he was declaring these to these ones that were with him. These were the ones chosen of God to be part of that special people unto God himself. And so Jesus declared these things unto them. These things concerning himself. And those words were, were spoken by Jesus himself, and they did bring comfort. He spoke comfort unto these ones that were in its hearing, and encouragement to make known his heart's desire in this, his devotion in accomplishing this. See, when we think about sanctification too, there's, a, there's this matter of devotion unto it. See, there's a matter of this determining to not be moved from that which God has called you unto. And Jesus has, has declared, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. See, Jesus expressed this truth about himself on that last night. Now, this, this matter of what Jesus was doing was, was, was declared in a prayer. He said he lifted up his eyes unto heaven and prayed this. He was, he was submitting himself to the Father, first and foremost, and acknowledging to the Father what he has accomplished. And that he was, for their sakes, sanctifying himself. Now again, these are the words of Jesus, revealing his promise, if you will, his pledge before God, and of his commitment unto his disciples to accomplish this. Jesus made this truth known in his prayer that's recorded for us in John 17. See, this, this matter of, of when we, we want to we consider Jesus in this. This is what we're doing. We're considering Jesus as the, as the foundation of our sanctification to, to a, a glorious re revelation and accomplishment. Whatever, whatever Jesus was, was shown to be doing, Whatever Jesus was declaring and saying and preaching and teaching, whatever he was working miracles in, it's all in perfect accord with the purpose of God unto the fulfilling to the full of his eternal purpose. Amen. It is said in the, in the volume of the book that can two walk together unless they be agreed. Well, the, the, the fullness of that is the Father and the Son. They are fully agreed in this matter of sanctification, and they're walking and working together in it. But this matter of making this known, see, he, he spoke these words. He spoke these words in the hearing of his disciples that were with him that last night. He spoke them for their sakes, for their sakes. Remember, he's like in... Uh, John chapter 11 at the tomb of Lazarus, when he, when, he, when he prayed unto God, he says, Father, I thank thee that you always hear me. He says, but I know you always hear me. 
I'm saying this for their sakes. I want them to know that they would believe on my name. See, that's why he's lifting this prayer up. It's for their sakes. Because he was set to accomplish something in a very few short hours of time. That is the accomplishing of the putting away of sin of the world by the sacrifice of himself. And that he was going to destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And that he would justify these ones before God by his blood. And redeem them from the ham of him who is stronger than they. And he would make peace with God through the blood of his cross. And that he might bring in and mediate the new and everlasting covenant. Jesus declared in the hearing of his disciples and in the presence of his heavenly father. For their sakes I sanctify myself according to thy will that I would do thy will. I am sanctifying myself to do thy will so that they would partake of these benefits. Amen. Now, this matter of sanctifying himself, we've heard this already today, and I just want to affirm it to you again, that Jesus is not determining to make himself holy. For he is and forevermore shall be the Holy One of God. For Jesus knew no sin. Jesus did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. And in him is no sin. Rather, Jesus wanted those ones that were with him that night, that last night, to hear of his dedication. Of his determination. Of his setting himself steadfast like a flint to accomplish the work of sanctification in them. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. Now again, these wonderful words of Jesus recorded for us in John 17 were spoken as a prayer to his heavenly Father. Now there are many accounts recorded in the scripture making known the manner of God's Son oft going off alone to pray, or apart from the others to pray. Now, most of his prayers are not in the record that God has given of his son, but not this prayer and not on this night. For this prayer was made in their behalf. For their sakes it was made, and they needed to hear it. They needed to keep it, and they needed to keep it close, because this was going to be the source of their strength of order for them to continue on trusting and believing in Jesus because the shepherd was soon to be smitten and then the sheep would be scattered. They needed to know that Jesus, their great high priest and king and intercessor, was for them even in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, even while he was no longer with them in the body. What Jesus reveals in this prayer is much more to their encouragement. He was declaring and making known that he was already at work in this matter of sanctifying them unto God. All of what Jesus now makes known is absolutely vital unto sanctification. Your sanctification depends on entering this into what Jesus has accomplished and is now doing. He would say this, Father, I have finished the work thou gavest me to do. Specifically, that work which God gave him to do on the earth. The apex of that work Jesus was sent to do from the perspective of time, that is the decease that he would accomplish at Jerusalem. That was soon to be accomplished. Yet there is much more that Jesus had already accomplished according to the will and purpose of God. And this is in, unto forming a people for himself. And Jesus is declaring that he is faithfully and completely engaged in that work. Father, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Amen. Some of the, 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 the workings of this sanctification and the means of it, ordained and purposed by God, 
Jesus was faithful to accomplish them. Jesus prayed, Father, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. John 17, 6. And what Jesus does is effectual unto all them that hear in what he has said, and they believe it. For he goes on to say, and they have kept thy word. They have kept thy word. See, that's vital yeah. unto sanctification, keeping the word, even hiding it in your heart. Because it's going to produce much fruit unto God. And that fruit was then beginning, beginning to bud. They have kept their, your, thy word. And this, here's some of the fruit that comes forth from keeping the word of God. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. That they are, they are making these connections by the words that Jesus spoke, that he is the Christ. That he has been sent by the Father. He is the one. And they're, they're coming to the knowledge of this truth by the words which Jesus spoke, faithfully ministering them unto them. See, these words, these words that Jesus spoke are vital unto sanctification because they're, they're declaring his faithfulness. They are making known in their hearing, in their receiving and keeping them, that Jesus is the Christ. Now, Jesus opened up this mighty provision of God when he said, for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. And he defined that truth as, thy word is truth. Jesus continued to affirm his faithfulness in what he has already accomplished as he continued praying. Father, I have given them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. And again, his is effectual work, this work of sanctifying himself for their sake, and they have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. This is the work, the work that Jesus has accomplished in, in, in his ministry on the earth. See, it's the words, it's the very words of Jesus that produce this effect. And I want to remind you once again that this mighty working in and through Jesus Christ is according to the will of God. He is forming a people unto himself. Amen. Unless you think that God himself, the Father, is in the background in all this, I would like to consider a promise made to the Son that the prophet Isaiah was given to reveal. When I want to I want to spend a little time in, in reasoning together with you on this. It comes from Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59 is, a, is a, a showing forth of the deadliness of sin and what it has affected between man and God. Your iniquities have separated you between you and your God. He has hid his face from you and he will not hear you. Verse 2. He continues to talk about the deadliness of sin. What are, what are all the ramifications of sin upon those who have sinned? Goes on to, to talk about this for many verses. And in, in, in verse 16, God speaks about this, and there was no man. And he wondered that there was no intercessor. There was none one to, to affect this eternal purpose in them. Therefore, his arm brought salvation, is the declaration unto him. His righteousness had sustained him. He's going to talk about, the, he's going to talk about his arm for the next few verses. The Lord Jesus Christ, what he has accomplished, will accomplish, and who he is and how he has done it. But then he concludes in verse 21, as for me, as for me now, God, God speaking, as for my involvement in this, from the foundations, he says, this is my covenant with these ones, these ones, 
We can make the association with Israel itself of the flesh, but also all who have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He's going to show us a, 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 um, an, another perspective of the new covenant's workings. A covenant I'm going to make with them, saith the Lord. So we know distinctly who is speaking here. It's the Lord. Amen. It's the Lord God. It's the Lord God, Jehovah, who is speaking this. He's going to say this. My spirit that is upon thee. Now, who is he talking about here? As, as, as the inquiry is, is, is the prophet speaking of himself or if he's, is he speaking of another? Well, the word says, by the testimony of two or three will this matter be established. Well, we have, we have a testimony recorded for us of, of this one upon the spirit that is upon thee. Isaiah's <clears throat> commentary is about the Lord Jesus Christ from beginning to end, about declaring himself and, and what he would accomplish, and finally God revealing him in the 42nd chapter when he says, Behold, my servant, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. The testimony of one, God himself. The second testimony comes from John the Baptist, who, who was told that the one that the Spirit comes upon, this is him. This is him. And John received that and declared the next day, seeing Jesus, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The second testimony. The third testimony is from the mouth of, in the words of Jesus himself. He declared that God was speaking of him when he was in the synagogue of Nazareth, when he quoted this text from Isaiah, saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Luke 4, 18 through 21. Three testimonies that this is speaking about Jesus. Amen. Now, here's God working here in this matter says this as he continues my words my words which I have put in thy mouth my words I'm putting in thy mouth I want to tie this into what Jesus had said concerning this he affirmed this to be the truth and God's faithfulness to declare it and make it known Jesus did that John 7 16 Jesus says my doctrine is not mine, but him his that sent me. Again, in John 8, 38, Jesus said, I speak that which I have seen with my father. And again, in John 8, 28, I do nothing of myself, but as my father hath taught me, I speak these things. These are God saying, these are my words, and I have put them in thy mouth. And so now, the, the prayer of Jesus and, the, and this, his word from Isaiah concerning the Father's involvement in this are meshing together. Now, these words I put in thy mouth, he says, they shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord from henceforth, and forever. Now Jesus here, in knowing this, of what the Father has said concerning himself and his involvement in this matter, we're talking about sanctification and the means of doing that, it's by the truth. It's by the truth. That's what Jesus said. Thy word is truth. And I have sanctified myself for their sakes that they might be sanctified by the truth, by the words, by the words Jesus said. And so he's affirming his faithfulness unto God to perform that which he was sent of the Father. Father, I have given them thy word. John 17, 14. And Jesus would faithfully and powerfully declare this truth. This, that about his words, he said this, For while heaven and earth shall pass away, 
my words shall not pass away. Because what, what, with this matter, what Jesus is working onto, in, the, in this eternal purpose that God has purposed in him, goes on beyond the ones that were with him that night. This is good news for us here in the year of our Lord, 2015. See, it is evident that in these first 19 verses of the prayer of Jesus is being made specifically for those disciples that were with him on that night. But praise God, Jesus will affirm that his prayer is not only for those disciples alone that were with him. Jesus continues to pray this, Father, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. The words that I've put in my mouth, God, in his mouth, God said, they're not going to pass away. <clears throat> they're not going to pass the part out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed. See, this was, these were the ones that Jesus gave the word to, his disciples there with them on that night. And they would minister the word. They would go throughout the world proclaiming the word and, and, and creating more seed, if you will. Their seeds seed. And so Jesus said, I'm not praying for just these ones here. I'm praying for all that shall believe on me through their word, according to the will and provision of God. So this is good news. If you're believing on Jesus through the words that the Father gave to the Son, who faithfully gave them to his disciples that night, his seed, who faithfully declared the words of Jesus throughout the world, making disciples of them, who are revealed to be of Jesus, thy seed's seed, unto our e hearing even now, and unto all that he shall add to the church, his coming again will reveal that you are part of that innumerable company for whom Jesus has sanctified himself. One last thought I want to <clears throat> encourage you, brethren, with tonight. This, it's concerning Jesus, who for our sake sanctified himself. It does have reference to those that believe on him through their word. Through the word of those that were with him that night, and also the ones that believe on their word. See, and, and, and he wanted to encourage us, us, because Jesus finishes the prayer this manner. Again, revealing his determination, his dedication, and his heart's desire to do the will of him that sent him, even unto the generations to come. Jesus prayed at the end in 1726, Father, I have declared thy name, and I will declare it. This is Jesus' announcement of his continuing in this work of sanctification. Because we are being sanctified by the truth. And Jesus has affirmed that he has done this and that he will do it. He has made this commitment, a continuing commitment, both to God and to his brethren. Amen. To continue in the work that he himself has sanctified himself for. See, this is, like, this is future tense. I will do it. I will do it. Yeah. Is the affirmation of Jesus himself. <clears throat> there is a uh, specific house of the brethren mentioned in the scripture. It's called the house of Stephanus. 1 Corinthians 16, 15. Something very unique about this house. He's, this house is going to collectively show forth the, 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 the heart's involvement of Jesus in our sanctification, of his desire and his commitment to do it. This is what the Apostle Paul said about this house of Stephanus. They have addicted themselves 
to the ministry of the saints. They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. See, this is a showing forth of Jesus, of his heart's desire. He has addicted himself to the ministry of the saints. Affirming this truth that for their sakes I sanctify myself. Jesus himself being addicted to the ministry of the saints. So in conclusion, brethren, what shall we say to these things? To the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.